un untitled folder one. Now having two folders which are untitled, so it is untitled folder one, right? So I'll go back from here, and once you want to rename this, you don't have to right click and then make it there, right? So what you can do is you can click here in the box checkbox, and there you can click on rename. Now you can make it like sample folder. All right, that's better. And in the sample folder where it is, yeah, yeah. You can see it was created just some of the seconds ago, right? And here, then you can create a new notebook section where you can just put up your codes, right? Similar. Once you create a Python three, you'll be getting something like this, where you can again rename the things. Okay. So these are the things basically. So where we are, we are somewhere in the workshop sections, right? Twenty twenty one Feb, and then the training. And this is our file there it goes okay it's clear how to open and how to start up with the things yes sir thank you sir all right thank you. okay so let's go ahead now in the programming section the very first thing we understood in the last class right what is programming if anyone could answer what is the programming language It is the way of communication between uh, humans and computers. Mm -hmm. Communication, what I said, yeah. You used to communicate between your systems, between your machines, right? With a common language, which is called as a programming language. Very easy. All right, better. Hmm. Great. So the very first thing you should understand in Python language once you go to start up with the things, right? We are very big, much beginner in the language. The very first thing is to learn about what language you are learning, right? So features and a lot of uh, you know methods we have just seen in the last class that what all the important attributes are there of Python, right? Like for the theory basis. Okay, now we will be going to practical things. Now. So the very first thing is to understand that if you are using Python in the net, if you see there are a lot of versions over there. I have given you some of the drive links also, right? In the group, if you check your group description, you'll get a drive link where you are having something Anaconda, PyCharm, PyCharm 3.615. Now you may be having doubt what is 3.615, right? So all these are nothing but the different different versions of this uh, language which is there being developed. Okay. So what you can do is you can check which version you are having. In your PC, right? That is the very first thing to understand. Right? When you're working with your language, the very first thing is to understand that which version work you are doing. Okay, on which version you are doing your work, so that you should know, like, what are the upcoming modules, what are the upcoming libraries which are going to work on that particular module, particular version. You can say. Okay, so the very first thing is to understand about the system version. So what we can do is we can import something called as sys okay right this is a cell right here nothing is going to be happen very large right you are just going to write codes in a very simple normal human language okay and you will be running it you will be getting your results out here simple all right so for running you can use shift plus enter okay for mac users you can go with shift plus return all right or you can hit this run button to just get it run here to everyone having any doubts till here shall we proceed yes sir all right okay so import says is something which is going to give your uh, importations of your uh, sys module okay then what you need is you to you need to print the version of your system like which here you are working on so you'll be writing sys dot version and just run it and I'm getting 3.7.6 what I'm having basically right so it's saying to upgrade I'm not uh, I haven't upgraded till now right so we'll be having 3.6.7.6 uh, right and however if I go to PyCharm that is an updated one there it will show 3.9.1 okay here it shows 3.7.6 so different different versions are there so whatever you have installed that you'll be getting that's the thing right simple is this code clear to everyone? What does uh, sys.version and how you run it? See, this was an input, this was an output. Simple. 
and many a times you'll be lo looking that when you write print sys dot version when you write this one then you see only directly uh, the uh, you know outputs here no slash and this is nothing but the output of a string we'll discuss on in return what is this brackets and uh, sorry what are these quotes and how the brackets are coming and all okay so basically this print is giving you no such out written here why because this time the machine knows that we are trying to print something here we haven't written anything right so machine didn't know that what we are trying to do we are just written it says dot version so it's giving the output that this is the value for sys dot version if you are going that sys so what is this sys dot version version is a function okay is a command which comes inside the sys like for a very simple example i'll say uh, these hashtags are nothing but the comments right comments i guess you know right well discuss it again don't worry so let's say sys dot version is something like from science if you are from a background of physics right so what do we say physics comes inside the science physics is a domain which comes in the science module right or we'll say it right uh, mm, commerce dot economics something like this clear to everyone version is a function which comes inside the sys module and you are getting the output that is 3.7.6 is being installed in your system that's it very simple okay clear to everyone write yes me in the chat box quickly excuse me sir yeah so why did you wrote import sys because uh, you have to see the version right so sys is a uh, oh, module sir. which gives the information regarding your system okay sir yeah sir when i have uh, written sys dot version it is showing error but when i have wrote print uh, sys dot version then it, what are you it using? was showing what you are using jupiter sir yes sir jupiter okay maybe uh, it may be a very previous version sometimes it doesn't work but it will work print writing print is not very important it will work run it for three four times it will be running it yeah okay. everyone is clear see if you are having doubts in the very first code just ask and if even if you are not understanding anything uh, sir yeah uh, what is the work of import uh, when to import something that you, you use the import yeah like if you want see in anaconda what happens there comes a lot of environments okay lot of things lot of uh, uh, modules are being kept there right so from there what you are trying to do is you are trying to import a particular model sorry module right so you are bringing from that environment so you are writing import this sys so sys is a module which is going to come from all the uh, modules where there is kept in the anaconda right so there are how many modules in python modules of python I'll see. I'll just write help and a bracket, right? This bracket is uh, next going to be called as parenthesis. So sys, sorry, help and this parenthesis. Then inside the parenthesis, you are going to write modules. Then run it. And you have to wait uh, just a uh, couple of minutes. It will be getting the output. so you'll be getting all the modules which are there present inside this sys Is it there? Yeah, done. So what do we see? Uh, these are some of the errors. No, sorry, uh, some of the warnings. Ignore it. It's not very important. Okay. And here we see there are the results now, which are like crypto, C, Python. Okay. Then from B, uh, from A, from B, C, F, till Z, whatever it is. Okay. So we have taken this, which comes from S. Where is this S? See here. So it is one of the module. Clear to everyone. There are a lot of modules. Okay, you are you are just going with one. Let's say in the last class we uh, did some of the expressions. 
right so from there we did it from the simply one right even these are data types like string I, I said so these are strings from say right if you import want to import that if it is notebook this is a notebook right these are number okay very simple right it is clear to everyone now yes sir how to find how yes, many sir. modules are there in the python then what exactly version you are using the first uh, simple things okay now proceeding to the topics okay let's say so inside any language yeah uh, sir uh, the line which we write uh, with hashtag uh, are comments only no yeah comments those are comments uh, those are not code right no those are comments thanks we'll discuss what are comments and all later on okay so in a programming okay. language, the very first thing which comes in any language we talk about, that is tokens. Okay. So what do we say the tokens? Let us write here. Okay. Okay. So the very first thing what we understand here is tokens in Python. Okay. And we do say it has to be the smallest individual unit. Sir. Hmm. Sir, I have written this uh, help modules, but I am not getting the output, sir. What error you are getting? Sir, I can show you. Sir, see. Paste here in the chat box. So you can see my camera. It just turned in. I'm looking there. Oh, wait, guys. Uh, yeah, where it is? Okay, you are presenting. No, sir, I am not presenting. I have just opened my camera. Uh, okay, just a minute. Let me pin it. Hmm. Uh, keep it steady, keep it steady. Yeah, it will come. It will come. Don't worry. It's still in progress. See, there is a star. It will come. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. Sir, it depends on the processor also. Yeah. A lot. Okay, sir. All right. So, what are a token guys? These are the very smallest unit in a program. Whatever the program is, these are the very smallest, smallest things in a program. Like we say, uh, let's phrase a sentence. Let's say s is equals to the boy is smart. Very simple, right? Here, what do we say? there are noun there are some particular adjective whatever different different factors of a sentence are right similarly for a programs also there are individual tokens okay so what are those token called as very simple so the tokens have some uh, names over there so let's see what are the names so the very first one name is keyword second is called as your identifiers The third one are the literals. Fourth one are the operators. And the last we say has to be punctuators. So these are the tokens. Now we'll discuss one by one what are keywords, what are identifiers, what are the literals, their operators, punctuators. All right. Okay. Now let's say a sample program I'm just writing. Okay, don't focus on the code right now. Just have a look on it. Uh, hello, Sir Akash, the site from Python Match. Yeah, Akash, what happened? Are you in the class? If yes, then speak out because I'm just writing some programs over there. All right, so a sample Python program, let's say that I'm just using a loop for a in a range of 1 to 10. Okay, uh, if the A is like a very simple program, like you might have done in C also. Yeah, I'll be getting the recording after session. Yeah, you'll be getting it. Don't worry. If internet is not working, internets are down actually sometimes. A lot of things are going on. Okay, no issues. You'll be getting the recordings. Okay. So for a in range of 1 to 10, if a is divided divided by 2 and 
gives your remainder as a zero, then print A. That means uh, in a range of one to ten numbers, it will be printing only the numbers which are going to get divided by two itself, only with two. And then we run and we see that two, four, six, eight are the numbers which, when divided by two, leaves the remainder zero. Right? Okay. Don't have. You don't have to understand the program right now. Here in this complete program, there are all these five keywords. Oh, sorry, all these five tokens. No, all these five lexical units. Right? What are those? Let's understand. So the very first comes keywords. Now see, so keywords are nothing but some of the special names, or you can say it's a reserved names that are already present in Python. And these are some predefined words with their special meanings. Okay, so like we cannot assign them as a variable name or something like different things. All right, clear to everyone. These are the special names which have their own meaning, and these are reserved names. I I hope it is clear. If if not, then you can just ask. Why I'm uh, using underscores here, and what how I'm making this? I'll let you know just a minute. That's why I prefer this because we can make notes over here, and then it will be easy for you to grab the things of the classes. At any point, if you feel that you are not comfortable, you are not understanding anything, you just unmute and ask. No need to hesitate. Okay, so predefined words with their special meanings, particularly the more focus. Okay, now we can just try this. Just a minute. Has to be predefined. Words with special meanings. All right. See now, what are these? Have a look here. Just what is this? Markdown. Can you see it? Mark, yes, sir. Markdown. Can you see this? I hope. Right. Okay. Yes, sir. Clear. So this is a markdown basically. Okay. Now I change it to code. What happened? See, an input box, uh, input uh, thing comes here, right? Simple, very simple. We can give some inputs over there. You can run it, and it will be raising you errors because these are some unwanted things. So we can just not write something like as a word, right? What are these? With see the deep green colors. Okay. These are nothing but the keywords of. Okay, these are only the keywords. What we say? Okay, just a So what we need to do is we need to go to markdown or you can go with the heading okay both will work right now if we go with heading it says use markdown headings so no need to go to heading directly you just go to markdown okay. or the other shortcut for this is that uh, like html you might be using right? everyone has done html yes no how many of you have not no sir it? no one it is yes yes how many sir. of you have done html yes sir How many have done HTML? Yes, sir. Me too. Two, yes, sir. I've done. Five. Yes, sir. five. Right. Five. From major, I think it's done. Right. Okay. See. So particularly, what happened here? in HTML? What happens? If you remember headings, heading one, heading two, heading three. Right. So yes. from H one to H six, what happens? Heading goes in a very decreasing order. 
Yes, sir. Right? So, what is that? H1. Here, H1 is nothing but the hashtag. One hashtag is mean, it means like first one, H1. If I give second hashtag, it will be smaller. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Clear to everyone? H1 to H6, that's it. Only this much are there. Right? So, particularly if you want to give some headings or some points, you can use this. H1 to H6 for writing the headings. Clear? All right. So I remove now, and this is the keywords. The keywords are, and if you use, like you know, in WhatsApp also, if you have a look on this, you'll be finding it that in WhatsApp, what happens? They use star like this, right, to make something as bold. So you can use the star even. You can use underscore even. So before and after the word, you have to keep it, and don't use the space. Like if you, once you use space, things will be changed. See, everything comes as bold now. If I want only to highlight this word, I'll be taking this keyword. Okay. Now, if you want to, you know, like run this and you want to get just some shade portions in the background, so you'll be using this uh, line that is code. Okay. After code, write the particular word and then, uh, you know, close the code like in HTML. What you do? That's why I ask, like, how many of you have completed HTML? Okay. So, is this simple? Any doubts here? How to write this? No issues. You just have to go to the markdown section. Like once you are here, you click on the code and go to the markdown. Or what you can do is you can write escape plus M. Escape M. That is markdown. Okay. And the code bit happens. So I guess it's easy. No doubt still here. All right. So keywords understood. What are keywords? Now, if there are reserved names in Python, then what are all those reserved names? We need to understand, right? So what we'll do again, we'll be importing keyword, and we would be printing all the list of keyword, or we can just write that we need to print. A keyword list. This is the function that we need to print. Now, where this function lies inside the keyword module. Simple. We'll run this, and all these are the list of the keywords. And if you want to see this in something like in books, what it is written, so we can again go to help of keywords, and we'll get a like a table. Right. So it's simple. Any doubts here? Input number five, input number six. Any doubt? Whenever you are having doubt, don't say sir, make it just up, make it down. You just say me the input number. That will be easier. Any doubts here, guys? Understood? No, sir. Better. So these are the keywords. All right. And these are only the reserved names, and always these are going to be there. Yeah, ask. So when I imported the keywords, it's, it's showing module not found error. Uh, open like show the video, please. Always you will find this in the deep green. Once you uh, open your video, tell me, okay? I'll go back there. All right, so deep green color. Always remember, hair in Jupiter I'm talking about, okay? Don't see it anywhere else. All right, so see, all these are the keywords. And how many are there? 35. Okay? Sir, I have shared the, sir, I have shared the screen. Ah, uh, okay, you have shared your screen. I just said to open the video and, you know. Okay, you are attending in laptop? Yes, sir. Okay. So let me see. 
where it is it's pinned up mm, yeah Impo okay remove this run it again ah uh, only s was needed to remove okay no problem run run done okay yes sir done sir mm. that are not keywords oh, that is only keyword that's why it was showing you error okay all right you can uh, let me present mine okay. visible to everyone screen screen is visible yes sir yes sir better all right so how many keywords are there now that's the thing right so what we'll do is we'll just print the length of again the same command keyword dot kw list and it says 35 that means the length of keywords kw list uh, the length of the keywords list what is here these lengths correct these are separated by the comma right one two three four five six something like this so how many are there 35 are there in in python how many keywords are there guys 35 all right it's okay yes sir all right. yes sir fine just That's fine. I think the first token is clear to everyone. That is keyword. Now you can go with the help of any particular keyword, like uh, similar thing. If you want to go with false, what is the working of false? That is your self-study part, right? So you can go with help. False. That will give you documentation. How false works. Okay. I don't want to make it here, so I am removing. Now what was the next identifier? No, oh, sorry. Next key, uh, token is identifier. So these are simple. Again, so identifier are nothing but the names given to. Okay, let me highlight only this one. These are the names given to different part of your program. okay right and it can be variable it can be a list it can be a function it can be an object it can be dictionary and so forth anything whatever you are making okay so let's run this now once you have understood that keywords all right these these import is a keyword understand the thing here the light green colors are a function deep green colors are going to be keywords red colors are going to be strings all right okay so if the deep green are the keywords then can you identify the keywords here in this program what are the keywords here so for in and if for in and if for in range if print range and print is not the range and print are the functions okay for in and f are the deep green see i said the deep green light green difference very easy difference you can find there so those are the things identifiers now i said as a name now if i go to here in the first line of the program that is for a in a range of this for a in range of this let me paste it what is it okay so for a in range of let's say 45 46 whatever the things and let me make it as a comment so for this 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 in this something like what this means what this a means it is a variable okay what is a variable we'll discuss right but now for now you understand this a is a variable something like it's a uh, got a name right 
that for this in a range of this right very simple so this means that this is a particular name which is being given to this program right and this name is nothing but called as the identifier clear so here what is the identifier in this program a because it is going to be get printed or it, it is not like every time whatever you print is a keyword sometimes even uh, the things which are not going sorry uh, is an identifier okay sometimes there are things which does not need to be to printed but still those are identifiers okay we'll see it later onwards with an example all right so okay. is this clear to everyone Yes, sir. Okay. Next come your literals. Now, what is literals? A very simple meaning. Text values. Or what we say? These are constants. So easy. Right, so you see it is, these are nothing but the constants. So here, again in the program we go, and if you look at here, what are the literals? What are constant here? Numbers, what does constant means, basically? Numbers, right? So literals are of four different types, but here constant defines you the 1, 10, 2, 0. These are nothing but the constants, right? So those are literals. For, in, if are the keywords. A is a identifier. Right? So, what kind of literals are there? Four kinds are there, right? So, what are all those four kinds are? So, first is your string literal. That means, whenever you say, whenever you see anything which is under. double quotes or single quote are called as string literals clear in python where you are going to see anything inside the quotes are string literals then there comes the numeric literals numeric are again of three kinds integer float and complex That will discuss, don't worry. Today we'll go with those things. And then there are Boolean literals, which means either true or false, or you can say either one or zero. And then we have special literals. Right? Special means like something as star, uh, none or tuple, those are not being much used. Right? Right, so clear to the things, what are literals? Okay. Yes. Then we go with operators. The fourth one. First three are clear to everyone, I guess. Okay. I'm going to operators now. Now, operators are... tokens that trigger some computations okay and when it is going to be triggered that means uh, what are exactly computation here first of all right i said operators are the tokens that trigger some of the computations computations mean some of the calculations or any such different operations right so when it is going to perform those calculations operations computations when applied to a variable right so how many operators are there arithmetic operators assignment operators
bitwise operators, shift operators, uh, identity, relational. Logical membership, right? So we have to discuss. All right, these operators are there now. How operators arithmetic means completely mathematics, right? Plus, minus, multiplication, division, all assignment means x equals 5, something x equals x plus 5, that all. But wise means your uh, you know, like or and that's all. Right, logical operators and all the similar same over there. Membership is something in, not in. Then identity is, not is. And relational means uh, if it is comparison. So relationals are also some kind, sometimes called as comparison operators. Like if it is greater than, equals to, uh, lesser than, equals to, or equals to, equals to. Okay, all those things. So operators, I guess, is clear. Now let's uh, go to the last of your token that is your punctuators. So can you please tell about the membership operator? Membership operators. Okay. Yeah. See, those are actually we are going to read forward. But still, let's see. For example, let's say whenever you upload a file. A very simple program I'm saying okay let's say you are uploading any file on a web and there are some of the extensions which are being provided okay let's say you have been provided with an extension that oh, you can only use PDF versions you can only use uh, DOCX versions something like this okay let's say so this is a, a ex extension variable. It consists of a list where we are having two different extensions that is PDF and uh, document, okay, word file. Now, I'll be taking an input from a user, right? Let's say, or if, if I just look on that, is this uh, CSV format or Excel format? Is this Excel format is present in this extension or not? So it is not present. It's it false. So why it is false? Because it is not present. So if we write that Excel is not in this extension, it says yes, this is a true statement. That means membership are just going to define whether that particular element what you have been searching for is a member of that variable or the uh, particular thing, whatever you are searching on. Right, that is clear. In and not in are the two operators of the membership operators. Okay, so I have discussed both of them. Clear? Yes, sir. Right. Aniket is writing something. What do you want to ask Aniket? Is in membership operator? Yeah, it is. We get ahead to punctuators. Okay. Punctuators are the very easiest thing, nothing but of the symbols that are used in programming language. Symbols are better, like hashtag, brackets, list brackets, at the rate, dot, comma, semicolon, quotes. Right? So we say punctuators. Symbols 
used in the programming language and again for example double quotes single quotes yeah. uh, yeah sir i am getting error in that extension uh, excel not in extension show the video yes sir uh, don't present just show the video if if we are working in laptop then you can present all right uh, like this 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 one a lot of brackets are there different different things are there semicolons okay all these are nothing but the symbols what we use in the program and nothing these are the punctuators now if i go to the first one i'll go to your video okay just uh, let me have this now i think you can identify all the five different tokens can you guys everyone every means everyone not even a single one should uh, get back from this right now everyone can identify that what all are the keywords here what all are the uh, operators here what all are the uh, numbers and all different things so let me make you once clear that for in and if we said as these are the keywords okay a are the identifiers range is a function okay all right 1 and 10 to these are nothing but of the excuse me sir yeah sir your screen is not uh, up actually okay okay just just a minute yeah bhavish is presented that so whoever was presenting please uh, just wait for a minute let me complete this then we can go to the presentation so this for in and if is going to be your keyword okay 1 and 10 are going to be the constants this purple symbols are going to be our operators okay so these are operators 2 1 10 all these are nothing but the literals a are identifiers for and if are your uh, what we read first there there as the keywords and then that's it this colon this comma this bracket whatever we have used is there nothing as the last so what up punctuators hey punctuators the symbols what we use these columns these brackets this comma okay sir okay uh, sir range and print of functions are predefined so they would be treated as keywords no keywords they would not be treated as keywords keywords are only 35 and there we didn't saw anything those are functions so just a minute guys so range and print are not part of any of these tokens no you can say this as to be the functions particularly not here okay. in the tokens okay. sir please uh, share the script also yes that will be shared don't worry yeah now who was presenting the screen please to present let me see your photo okay. quick let's have a quick glance over there uh, we have a lot of things to work just a minute you present i'm looking there okay hello yes sir yes, yeah who's this Sir, uh, see this, sir. Excel not in extension, uh, and it is giving error. Mm -hmm. What do you say? Uh, sir, Excel not in extension. Uh, I wrote over the code, and so uh, here, C C C, you haven't uh, defined the extension even, right? So once you have oh. to uh, define it, like E X T, E X T equals to give, uh, you know, you can give a square bracket, similar. Let me paste the code in the chat box. You can take it from there. Okay. Uh, Devan, just wait for a minute. Yep. Wait for a minute. Yeah, Devan, please wait for a minute. Yeah. Uh, take it. Okay. This is the code. Okay. Now you okay. run it and uh, show your screen if it is working. Yeah, you see Devan. What happened? Okay, sir. I will do it. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Sir, I have a doubt, sir. Mm -hmm. No problem, no problem. Uh, you can see the video. Okay, today we'll be going with the Python basic, so not to worry. Yeah, I'm here. Say. Uh, uh, if we consider C, C plus plus in Java, so we used to use semicolon uh, for the statement enders. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 
sir. But in the above code where for and range was there, sir, mm -hmm. you have ended the statements with the colon, sir. Sir, it is it used in uh, Python? I have used. Let me present. Can you see my screen? No. Yes, sir. You can see. Okay. Good. Uh, where is the loop? Oh, just a minute. Yeah, here it is. What do you say? What's the problem? What's your doubt? C++ in Java used to, we used to terminate the statements using semicolon. So, like this, uh, right? Here you have, uh, yes, sir. Hmm. Here we use this. In Python, we use this, sir. Yeah. Okay, sir. Hmm. All right. So, is this clear till here? Everything is clear, guys. No doubts, I guess. Yes, sir. Clear. Very good. So we have nine minutes. We have to go. Back. All right. Now let's go to the comments first of all. Now you have been seeing, looking on here, like what are the green things? So I'm looking, like writing up hashtags, then writing the words. Those are nothing but the keywords. Oh, sorry, uh, comments. Now comments are nothing but the notes what you write for your programs for your codes, right? We uh, do make notes for every simple and single things, right? Like uh, in future, we are not going to have problems regarding that, right? So we do create note for that. So in a program, like if you are making a website, you are making some big codes and in any section, if you are not aware, like, uh, or confused that what is that exactly code for, we can use uh, comments. Like if you are reading this, how will, what is this deep green? equates this equates you the uh, keywords so you can easily anyone who is running who is reading this can uh, easily know that deep green are equals to keywords basically even if you don't know you can just have a look on this right so uh, these comments are of two types particularly right these are your single line comments and are your multi line comments okay so let me write here the types as to be single line and multi line and these are the types but now single line is something like if I write this is a single line comment. And if I want to make it multiple, I can make it. This is your multi line comments. And we can write the copex here. Yes. Comments clear? These are just used to describe a block of codes, whatever you write. Yes, sir. Everyone clear? Yeah. Next. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Next goes with the variables. So, what variables are? These uh, represent you some of the reserved storage locations and are uh, made to store some of your values. Okay? they have some of the values they store some values whatever it should be so uh, i would say this has to be that they represent storage locations and store values and we go with very simple definitions, not with the book is one, right? Very simple things to make you understand. Now, so let's say A is a variable which have a number 20. B is a variable which is having a number 45.3 or 34.2. C is a number, uh, C is something like, let's say it is having a word called as machine. We'll run this. All three different things are a variable. And every three of them are having a different type. So how do we check the type? So for checking type, you can go with the type of a, the type of, you can write a function of type, 
the type of B and go to the type of C. We run this. So first is an integer, second is a float, and third is a string. Again, very simple. Right. Okay. So this is how you can go to check the types of different things, right? Now data types, these are data, data types. Integers are something, we'll discuss quickly this, that integers, integers are particularly your whole numbers. All right. So what are your integers? Integers are your whole numbers. That means all the numbers which start from zero here, sorry, here you can say has to be negative one, right? So negative infinity, something like this. Where it is. Yeah. So you can start with negative infinity here to your positive infinity. These are going to be our integers. Or you might not get infinite sign here. There is an option in the Mac here. So for Mac users, you can get it there. So this is, okay, see, again, there is an error. Yeah. So integers are whole numbers. Negative uh, infinite to positive infinite numbers over there, whatever you take, right? So all those number, whole numbers, there nothing come as the you know, divisions. Any points are not there. So all the numbers 20, 30, 15, minus 20, minus 3, minus 5, nothing. So all these are the integers. Now if we say B, those are float. Float in the sense in mathematics we say has to be what? Real numbers or decimal numbers. What do you say? That comes everything. Right? So particularly yes, I'll say uh, real, numbers. real numbers or decimal numbers, whatever you try to say it as fractions and all. Right. So it would it can be 34.0, it can be minus 34.0, 34.2, anything. Right? C is a, you know, C is a string. Okay. But there is a numeric type third one which we say as complex the complex in class 11th you might have read in mathematics that is a combination of your real plus imaginary numbers right and these are in the form of a plus bj okay very simple things now for complex let's say d is equals to i'm writing 34 plus 5j for e i'm just writing uh, 34j so things are, see, D is a type, if I check the type of both, D, and if I check the type of E. So D and E both are complex, right, in form of A plus B, J. So A is 34, B is 5, here only J is there, no A. So what A will be? 0. How do we check? So D dot real and D dot imaginary is going to give you the output. So it says that d dot real part is 34, imaginary part is 5.0. And in the e, there is no real part, that is 0. But there is an imaginary part, that is 34.0. Here it is clear till here, numeric types. Okay. So we are going to get things done till here. So any doubts in today's class? No, 